Welcome back to week four of the Sustainable Energy MOOC. The first step in understanding electricity markets is to understand how the energy balance is maintained in an electricity system. Electricity is an attractive energy carrier because there are many possible ways of producing it. Traditionally, electricity is generated from energy sources such as hydropower, coal, oil, natural gas, and nuclear power. Many different kinds of renewable energy technology are now being added to the mix. At the other end of the supply chain are all the consumers. Some consumers also generate electricity now, for instance with solar panels. From a system perspective, at each moment we would like to use the best, the cleanest and the cheapest resources to meet demand. Generally a network is needed to transport electricity from the generators to the demand side. Let's assume an adequate electricity network is in place. It is a key challenge in the design and operation of an electricity system to match supply and demand continuously. Electri electricity generation must follow the demand profile from second to second. Failing to do so may cause the system to become unstable, which could ultimately result in power outages. The cause of this challenge is that with current technology, it is quite expensive to store electricity. The only affordable option right now is to store electricity in pumped hydro reservoirs, but their potential is limited. Therefore, electricity must be generated at the same time that it is consumed. This is a challenge because demand varies substantially over the course of a day, week, month and year. If we can develop an affordable storage technology that can be implemented on a large scale, the whole electricity system would become much easier to operate and it would become much easier to integrate renewable energy sources. The following graphs give an impression of the variability of electricity demand. Here you see the demand in the Netherlands on a single winter day. Over a month, this results in a pattern of daily peaks and valleys in the demand. The weekends are recognizable by their lower demand peaks. Here we see Dutch electricity demand for a whole year. Large swings in consumption are clearly visible. In many countries, there is a stronger seasonal pattern caused by the use of electricity for heating in winter and cooling in summer. So how are these demand swings met? In principle, we want to meet demand at the lowest cost. So if demand is low, we only use cheap generators. At moments with higher demand, one by one, the more expensive generators are added. This way, the supply function of electricity is created. The green curve in the graph. On the x-axis is the capacity of the power plants, and on the y-axis is their variable generation cost. The supply function is a step function. Each step represents the capacity and the variable cost of a power plant. The way in which the generators are ranked in the supply function from low to high variable operating costs is also called the merit order of generation. By matching the supply function with the demand function, we can see which generators are needed to meet demand at that given time. The orange line represents a stylized demand function at a moment with little demand for electricity. The demand function indicates how demand changes as the electricity price changes. At higher prices, the demand declines. The fact that the line is nearly vertical means that consumers hardly change their behavior as electricity prices go up. The real shape of the demand function is difficult to determine as many customers currently do not have an incentive to respond to short-term variations in the ele electricity price. This may change as smart grids are implemented or more flexible forms of demand develop, such as the charging of electric vehicles. When, at another moment, demand is higher, the demand function shifts to the right. This means that for a given price, more electricity is consumed. The angle of the demand function is still the same, which means that the consumers still reduce their demand by the same amount when the price is higher. In order to meet this higher demand, it is necessary to add production by more expensive plants. The cost of generation increases. Here you see the situation during a demand peak. Nearly all power plants need to run, and the cost of generation is a lot higher. So let's summarize what we've learned so far. During times of low demand, only the cheapest plants with low variable costs are running. Traditional base load technologies are coal and nuclear power, 
but also wind and solar generators will always produce when they can, because their variable cost of generation is essentially zero. Natural gas plants are often used for shoulder hours, say the office hours of a year. They have higher variable cost because natural ga gas is more expensive than coal and uranium. In the peak hours, the few hours per year when demand is even higher, old plants or sometimes open cycle gas turbines are used. These plants cost little money to keep available, but they have high operating costs. How can electricity markets achieve this efficient result? And how do electricity markets change when large volumes of renewable energy are integrated? Watch the next videos.